Universal Center for Innovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. A biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy the video. You N C R Universal Center for Renovation Did the Oracle of Delphi fall into a ascetic trance when she spoke to Apollo? Let's look into some secrets of the Oracle of Delphi from high times. Puff, puff, past. The Oracle of Delphi inhaled deeply how this ancient Greek witch saw the future with a little help. Have you ever been so high that time ceased to flow, that both past and future overlapped, and the present became magical. Suddenly, you possessed insight into reality, the universe, or parallel dimensions. There may be some historical precedent for this high-mindedness. For nearly 1,200 years, the ancient Greeks turned to a series of pagan witches named the Oracle of Delphi who huffed fumes to speak with the gods. They turned to her to ask the important questions about life and to have their fortunes told. Often depicted as an old woman squatting above a crevice in a dark cave. She inhaled sweet-smelling fumes coming from the Earth's unknown interior and predicted the rise and fall of empires. The Oracle of Delphi, about 800 BCE to 400 CE, was the most famous of these fortune tellers considered the mouthpiece of Apollo the god of light and truth she was sought out by philosophers and kings alike to ask questions she was called the pythoness because there was allegedly a giant snake carcass rotting deep inside the cave where she prophesied. This python was said to give off sickly, sweet smelling fumes that the oracle would inhale in order to see the future. Everyone from emperors to impoverished students will come to ask the gods questions but like everything in the ancient world there were rituals that had to be observed first the oracle of delphi never prophesied in winter and would only answer questions on the seventh day of the month to prepare herself to hear the god she would undergo purification rites, including bathing naked in a nearby spring. People were also required to sacrifice goats and donate money before they were allowed to see her. Imagine this, wearing a simple white dress and purple veil the oracle crouched 
on a golden tripod of spiraling snakes above a crevice in the rock and inhaled vapors that drifted up. A goat was then sacrificed and the supplicant asked their question. Inhaling deeply from the holy vapors, the oracle's voice changed, her eyes rolling back in her head, and she would enter ecstasy. The priest who intended her would then write down her stone ravings as poetry. Perhaps dealers everywhere will sell more product if they too offered horoscopes on the side. The fumes she inhaled were called pneuma, which is Greek for breath or wind, and they came from a fissure in the cave called the chasm. Modern scientists have returned to the ruins and study the geology of the area and theorized that these fumes were naturally occurring ethylene, a sweet smelling petrochemical gas that can produce a feeling of euphoria, a naturally occurring hydrocarbon. Ethylene is a colorless flammable gas that has a sweet and musky odor. Until the 1970s, ethylene was experimentally used as an anesthesia and is known to create a feeling of disembodied ecstasy, altered mental state, and pleasant sensation. It wears off quickly, but can be dangerous or lethal in excess. This divine madness and drug feud ecstasy occurs in many religions and cultures across the world. While Nirvana and Buddhism and ecstasy and Catholicism are not necessarily drug related, many people have claimed divine madness and divine truth are accessible through substances. Perhaps the Oracle of Delphi was just a proto Ardos Huxley. He wrote The Doors of Perception, dropping mescaline or that huffing ethylene creates the illumination Horace admires when he writes about vino divino or divine wine. The knowledge of gods, like drug feud ecstasy itself, is not clear or logical. When asked who the wisest person in the world was, the oracle answered that the famous philosopher Socrates was the only person who understood that he knew nothing. During Socrates' trial and subsequent execution, he cited the oracle in his self-defense and the sacred madness the gods gave her in ecstasy. The Oracle of Delphi was not the only fortune-telling witch in the ancient world. There were ten of those sibyls across the Mediterranean, famously depicted by Michelangelo on the Sistine Chapel ceiling. They show paganism's impact and influence on Christianity and Western culture. Wherever you look in Western religion and society, you see the influence of these ancient witches. The ruins at Delphi tell another story. Overlooking beautiful vestas of Mount Parnassus, rot the sun-bleached stones of ancient temples, houses, theaters, and treasuries. This real physical reminder shows us that actual people participated in this cult and documented 
the oracle's visions. For example, Plutarch, a Roman historian known for his biographies on Alexander the Great and Julius Caesar, was once a high priest in the oracle's temple. Writing later in life about the importance of drugs to hear the gods. The prophetic Numa inhaled fumes is most divine and holy. It creates in souls an unusual temperament, the strangeness of which is hard to describe. It is likely that by warmth and diffusion it opens up certain passages through which impressions of the future are transmitted. Just as wine, when it fumes, rise to the head, revealing many unusual moments and also words stored away and unperceived. Plutarch's Marella 432E The ancient nations spoke to their gods while they were high on drugs. The ancient Israelites were not allowed to conduct these rituals.